Seven friends decided to take a risk and pass through the famous terrible Traverse Passage without realizing the true horror that awaited them. This is the terrifying true story of Brent Colvin, a courageous man whose adventure turned into one of the most intense and claustrophobic rescue missions ever. Before we begin, we want to give a huge shout out to everyone who has supported our channel. Thanks to you, our subscription rate has grown from 7 to 9%, which is incredible. Without further delay, let's dive into today's video. Brent Colvin was part of a group of seven cavers, set out for a mission under the guidance of their leader, Luca Clarabini. The group included Heather, Steve, Jim, and brothers Ben and Brian. Their mission was a through trip, which means entering the cave from one entrance and exiting through another. The cave was the Thunder Canyon Cave. One shrouded in mystery and known only to those in the caving community as it is difficult to find. Located in eastern San Diego County, it requires a journey along miles of dirt road and a two-mile hike, followed by a scramble to reach its various entrances. Thunder Canyon Cave is notoriously claustrophobic with many tight spaces and an impenetrable darkness without flashlights. The cave demands the use of ropes for repelling and heavy metal chains to navigate its toughest sections. Danger lurks at every turn with numerous ways to get stuck or severely injured. The cave is unsettling, with random boulders and treacherous paths. It resembles a horror movie set a place most should never enter due to the difficulty of making it out safely. Brent Colvin, a 39-year-old software engineer from Valley Center, California, had been exploring caves like Thunder Canyon for about a year. Known for his methodical approach, a trait honed from his engineering career, he always took his time to ensure safety. His love for caving was supported wholeheartedly by his wife, Raina, whom he married beneath a 500-year-old oak tree in their backyard. She was his biggest supporter, and he cherished her deeply. On Sunday, May 3, 2010, the group hiked for a couple of hours through the desert to reach the cave. They arrived at the site at 11 a.m., found the entrance, and set up their gear, donning their wetsuits in anticipation of the challenges ahead. Their first task was to descend a rock face using a double rope coiled around their bodies, anchored to a boulder near the cave's opening. The plan was to rappel 45 feet into the darkness, through a waterfall, and into an icy pool below. This perilous descent was a rush for Brent, part of the excitement he had eagerly anticipated for months. Once down, the group experienced a mix of relief and terror. Luca, the guide, was pleased that everyone made it safely through the first major hurdle. Steve, the second to descend, was soaked and began shaking uncontrollably. The harsh reality of the cave's difficulty started setting in. Luca asked if anyone wanted to turn back, but the group decided to press on to the middle entrance. Setting up the next 80-foot rappel took about 10 to 15 minutes, and as they progressed, the cave grew colder. Crawling, climbing, wading through icy water, and shimmying through tight spaces, they made two more rappels without incident. At around 3 p.m., they reached the infamous fissure known as the Terrible Traverse. This section earned its name for its right-angle turn into a 9-inch wide granite crack that had to be navigated sideways. The crack was so tight that one couldn't even turn their head, and it descended vertically for 200 feet. Just beyond this fissure lay the cave's exit, their goal for the day. The group now exhausted, wet and sore, felt a surge of excitement as they neared the end. Brent exhilarated despite his fatigue had never reached this point in the cave before. It was a personal mission to conquer this rare challenge and prove himself as an expert spelunker. Luca removed his harnesses and went through the crack first to assist from the other side. Steve, feeling very cold and tired, attempted to rush through the crack, and then he got stuck. Panic set in as he realized he was pinned, his inexperience and exhaustion overwhelming him. After 10 minutes of frantic pulling and pushing, they managed to free Steve, who was now traumatized. He had never been pinned like that before. Steve decided he needed to leave the cave immediately. While he was freaking out, three more friends successfully navigated the crack. Luca then escorted the other three members to the cave's exit, leaving Brent and Jim, 
assuming that they could handle themselves until he returned. Brent was second to the last to attempt the same aperture where Steve had gotten stuck. The thought of squeezing through the tight gap made his heart pound faster and faster. He had never attempted such a constricted passage before, but Brent was determined. This was the moment he had been preparing for, the ultimate test of his skills and courage. As he approached the crack, he took a deep breath, steeling himself for the challenge ahead. Brent didn't realize that Luca wasn't there. If he had known, he would never have attempted the fissure without Luca's guidance to navigate the challenge. To get through, you had to move your feet down the length of the crack, angle your body sideways. This required a combination of flexibility and strategic thinking, as you had to make precise adjustments to your posture and movements to make it through the tight space. On Brent's first attempt, his intuition told him he wouldn't make it, but Jim encouraged him to try anyway. Not wanting to inconvenience anyone with a long trip back through the cave, Brent backed out and removed his harness. In just his wetsuit, Brent tried to slide through, but his hips jammed. His feet poked through the other side, and his left arm was the only thing supporting his body. His hand rested on a wooden plank left to cover boulders, preventing from slipping deep into the crack. Brent felt the rock's tension pressing against his body as he pushed through. His chest squeezed in, and his body contorted. He wiggled and strained before realizing he was completely stuck. His face pressed hard against the cold rock wall, sweat poured down his face, and he felt the urge to cry. This was one of the worst possible scenarios in the cave. Luca finally returned, hearing Brent's moans between the rock walls. Adrenaline surged through Luca as he sprang into action. Luca and Jim tried everything, but Brent was stuck badly. After about two hours, Brent started losing feeling in his supporting arm. He slid further into the crack, where the gap narrowed to eight and a half inches. His body weight pressed on his left elbow with his back and chest touching the cold granite walls. Jim tried to yank Brent out, but it was agonizingly painful and ineffective. They told Brent to keep moving any part he could, even if just a slight amount, so he started kicking out his right leg. Apart from Jim's headlamp, they were in total darkness. Brent drifted in and out of a dreamlike state as Jim told stories to keep him awake. When Luca and Jim couldn't get him out, Luca ran for help. He climbed out, hiked two miles to a car drove to the top of a hill, and called 911. Unfortunately, he mistakenly called for a medical team instead of a rescue team. Eventually, Sheriff Sergeant Don Parker was notified around 6.40 p.m. Two specialized teams from the department were mobilized, along with responders from the San Diego Fire Rescue Department and the Border Patrol. While experienced spelunkers often manage to extract themselves with calm and careful movements, but as in Brent's case, getting a trapped man out can be extremely difficult and occasionally tragically fatal. The medical team worried that Brent would get compartment syndrome if his chest started to swell, which could push against his heart and possibly lead to cardiac arrest. Nine hours in, Brent began having delirious visions and speaking incoherently. On their way over, the rescue team developed a plan with the available resources, knowing they would need a helicopter to reach the cave. They carried a full assortment of extraction equipment. These rescuers were experts who had navigated the cave before, but finding their way in daylight was still challenging due to the landscape's labyrinth of similar-looking boulders. Once inside, they assessed Brent's condition. Brent was stuck against rock much colder than his body temperature. Despite the 70-degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature, being wedged between two rocks would inevitably lower his body temperature to fatal levels. The top priority was to warm Brent as much as possible. He had been stuck for about 10 hours and needed warmth and comfort desperately. They placed heat packs around his body and gave him an electrolyte drink. Both Jim and Brent were hypothermic and needed to be freed from the cave urgently. The rescuers then jacked up the plank near Brent's head to angle him for an exit. As they began to pull him, Brent wailed in pain. When they asked if they should stop, he shouted, Keep going, I don't care if you break my ribs, just get me out. The rescue team rigged a few anchors high in the crack and attached ropes to the board alongside Brent. 
they hoped to raise both the board and Brent simultaneously. Initial attempts to move the board failed, so the team added mechanical advantage by using carjack. Despite using the jack, progress was slow. Finally, another pull on the mechanical advantage system successfully moved Brent three inches. One of the rescuers, John Norman, then began yanking Brent as hard as he could. Brent screamed in agony, but the team persisted, pulling on the board. Slowly, Brent began to emerge. Eventually, they yanked him out. Brent, initially disoriented, felt a profound joy and relief upon realizing he was free. They gave him more electrolyte drinks, and after resting for about 20 minutes, he climbed out of the cave. At 3.45 a.m., Brent was winched out of the hillside by a helicopter and taken to an ambulance. He had a few scrapes and bruises, but was overall in good spirits ecstatic to be out. In total, 10 members of the cave team assisted in the rescue, with two Borstar members helping with caving duties and a San Diego Sheriff's SAR member aiding with communications at the cave. Brent's harrowing ordeal was a stark reminder of the dangers inherent in cave exploration.